Assalamu alaikum dear students, it's Dr. Masma Mehtab. Welcome to my YouTube channel, Medical School. So today we are going to discuss about the deviated nasal septum, septal hematoma and septal abscess. So let's go. Uh, before going or moving towards the topic, let's recall the nasal septum. So it's osteocartilaginous septa of the nose that divides the nasal cavity into two halves. Okay, now this septa contains three structures. We have the columella, which forms the tip of the nose, the membranous part and the septum proper. So here you can see this is the columella uh, that forms the tip of the nose and this is the membranous part that lies in between the columella and the septum proper. So this pr septum proper is made up of this is a cartilaginous component and then we have the bony component here. Now we know the normal septa looks like this and the base of the nose will be looking like this. Now what happens? In the DNS, there is deviated septum. So here you can see the normal septa is deviated or it's dislocated. So the base of the nose will be like this. Now you can guess that any deviation in the nasal septa can cause deviated nasal septum. Now let's talk about the types of DNS. We have anterior deviations, C-shaped deviation, S-shaped DNS, nasal spur and thickening of nasal septum. So here is the anterior dislocation. So as it's anteriorly dislocated, this, that's why it is called anterior dislocation. And then you have to remember that here is the only unilateral obstruction. And it's not, uh, it's not actually obstructing another side. There is only one-sided obstruction. And in this case, she C-shaped deflection, you can see this is, there is a simple curve which is obstructing again one side of the nose. But in the case of S-shaped deflection, you can see this deflection is obstructing this side and this side as well. So in this S-shaped deflection, there will be bilateral obstruction. Now the fourth type is nasal spur. Now this is the shelf-like projection. Now you can see this projection com can compress the lateral wall of the nose resulting there will be pressure headache and in this case epistaxis is very common. And then we have the thickening of the nasal septum. Now the septa can thick uh, just because of um, the septal hematoma and other causes can also be there. Okay. So what causes the DNS? So initially we have trauma, there is injury or external compression can deviate the nasal septa easily or there can be developmental error. Now it's the unequal growth of palate and the base of skull. I have a diagram, we will be talking about the developmental error in the next slide. Okay, come to the racial factors. So mostly cautions have deviated nasal septa and then we have the heredity factors. Okay. Now here you can see this is the developmental error. Here is the palate is highly arched and that may lead to the curve of DNS. So in the developmental error, this is the cause of DNS. Okay. So clinical features include headache, there can be anosmia, sinusitis, epistaxis, external deformity and the nasal obstruction. So headache, uh, in the spur, we have the pressure headache as we have discussed already and anosmia is due to the obstruction. Uh, there may be partial, there may be complete obstruction. So there can be complete or partial anosmia depending upon the type of DNS. And then we have sinusitis. So the uh, DNS can compress the ostea of the sinuses or it can block the meatuses. So it can easily cause a sinusitis. And epistaxis is a very important and common complication of spur like DNS. And then we have external deformity and nasal obstruction depending upon the type of DNS. Okay. So here I have put a mnemonic that is a scene. However, uh, there is a middle ear infection as well. So the mnemonic is ambacine. So the mnemonic is somehow funny. You have to remember by ambacine, like middle child is always a scene. So if you are a middle child, you will remember this mnemonic. Okay. Then how will you treat? We have SMR operation. Now this is an old procedure. Now what happens is a septoplasty, which is a new procedure to correct the DNS. 
Okay, now you here you can see this is the deviated nasal septa, and after the surgery, you can see the nasal septa has been corrected. Okay, now what happens? This uh, deviated parts are actually removed and corrected and repositioned in the septoplasty. So this is the surgical procedure for the correction of deformity. Okay, now what are the other causes of nasal obstruction? We have. Uh, now we are going to discuss about septal hematoma and septal abscess. So talking about the septal hematoma, we know this is the nasal septa. Now we also know that it contains the bony part here and the cartilaginous part. And the next thing we know is the cartilage is covered by perichondrium. However, the nose, uh, the bony compartment is covered by the periosteum. So this hematoma can be a hematoma is a blood accumulation. So what happened? There can be accumulation of blood into the perichondrium or into the periosteum region. So that may lead to the septal hematoma. So here you can see. Now what happens in the septal hematoma? There can be obstruction. So there can be bilateral obstruction. It may cause a frontal headache. Again, this is a picture. This is a picture of septal hematoma. This is a perichondrium and the nasal septa so here is now you can guess easily that if it's uh, on the on this side as well as on this side what will happen there can be bilateral obstruction okay the next thing is septal abscess now remember one thing this abscess we know what is abscess now the septal abscess is always due to the secondary infections of light we have septal hematoma we have discussed previously so if a patient has septal hematoma he or she uh, very easily develop the septal abscess or it can be due to the frontal or it can be due to the acute infections like we have the typhoid and meso. Okay, now uh, what are the complications or the clinical features? We have the bilateral nasal obstruction. There can be pain and tenderness over the nasal septa, tip of the nasal septa. Then the patient may develop fever and chills because we know abscess is an infection. Then we have the frontal headache and submandibular lymph nodes may also be enlarged and tender. Now, this is a diagnostic feature of the patient. Okay. So, how will you treat the patient? You have to drain the abscess. You have to remove the necrotic pieces and then go for the systemic antibiotics. So, that was all about the lecture i hope you understood very well thank you so much remember me in your prayers and eat mubarak allah